Welcome to the Monday night Form Hop Life Men's Forum. I think it's pro probably not. Uh, number 10, Father's Day, Fatherhood episode. Uh, I am Matt DeRozier of Form Hop Life. And tonight we have Josiah Young of Over the Moon Farm in Kansas City, Missouri. How's it going? Good, man. How are you? You know, I'm down in Dallas. I was wondering, uh, I was like, this is not your, uh, it's not my not pantry. your pantry. Yeah. That's right. What are you, what are you doing in Dallas? Is work stuff? Uh, yeah. Work class. So is, is that fun? No. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes it could be if you're like my white hat hacker buddy, he's like, man, I had like, I, I got to go to DEF CON and then right after DEF CON, I went to blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh man. It's fun to learn stuff. I mean, it's uh, you know, it, it makes me more more valuable as a as an IT guy. Um, so I mean, I I I enjoy the learning aspect. I don't I don't love being I don't love traveling. I'm not much sure. of a traveler these days. So, is it the is it the time away from family? Yeah, I mean, usually two days. Two days is enough. Like two after two days, I start kind of missing. Oh yeah. The family. Um, I got you. Whether I'm home or not, you know, sometimes they'll be gone for a couple of days. Oh, sure. So, so yeah, I miss my property too. I mean, the whole the whole reason I bought it is because I liked it. So I'd rather just, <laughs> right. I'd rather just. I mean, I'm okay with not leaving the county. So I don't know. I, I sure as heck don't love driving to Dallas. So. <laughs> uh, let's talk uh, some personal events. What uh. What'd you get done or what happened this weekend? Good, bad, ugly, Father's Day? Well, I, well, I had to leave. I had to leave Sunday uh, afternoon to drive down here. Kind of my choice to drive, but I, I don't like sure. flying much. Um, no, we, we expanded the goat pasture. We put up another pasture. Um, nice. We're kind of borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. We have electric fence, electric netting that we were using to protect the garden so that the chickens could free range. So while I'm gone, we pulled the fence from around the garden. The chickens are back up in their run, and the goats have a big old area now to, to clean up. So I'm trying to decide if it's worth throwing down some extra cash for, for some more electric fence so we can do this a little easier. But that's the big stuff. We got them on a new, a new paddock that hasn't been grazed since, uh, since we had some of my friend's goats up. So it's been three, four years now. So Dang. That's pretty much it. Still, still cleaning all that area up, and there's a bunch of dead cedars that you know I need all the brush cleared off so I can mill them. So they'll do the work. Nice. That's pretty slick. Yeah. Yeah, I think I saw a picture of you, t you t of you turning out your goats, and it was something along the lines of like, "There's no way that they'll take all take care of all of this," and it's like two hours later. <laughs> What happened it's all the funny. Grass? It goes. It goes from. It goes from. I don't know. I, I. I can't believe they haven't eaten anything. To. It looks like Agent Orange and Vietnam kind of a thing. Like just. <laughs> there's just nothing left. You know. I mean, they've like. You'll walk in and you'll like get get low enough for goat level, and you'll see there's nothing green. Like there's that line where there's nothing green. They can't get to it. Mm. You know, and I mean that's ultimately that's kind of the goal with the spots that they're in right now is to really clean it up. So I don't mind that they're kind of nuking it. Um, it's not great, you know, later on when it's actually pasture, sure. but for now I need it cleaned up. So, yeah, cool. I, um, I did this, I, I launched, I did a soft launch, I guess is what they call it. I don't know. Maybe I'm making that up of, uh, our, our 20 by 23 program, 20 by 23 project is what it is. 20 by 23 project to like, start getting people on the schedule for next year. So like we could help uh, 20 homesteads by the end of 2023. That's our, that's our goal. There's a lot more to that, but uh, I can't give too many details right now. There's uh there's a lot more behind the scenes that maybe next month I can get into, but that's exciting. Well, yeah, man. And then uh, Saturday I drove, two hours to go pick up some used fencing um, so I can, I can put up some fence along the road and there's more to do other places. Just don't know where I want to put it yet. Can never have too much fencing. 
That's true. That's true. And it's like, it's there for 800 bucks. I got 56 and a half foot treated posts, 74, 12 foot rails, a bunch of rolls. of, And then two, two metal gates uh, that are like seven, seven and a half feet wide or something like that. So I, I thought I came out pretty good on that. That's a good haul. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was kind of fun to take the drive. It was real pretty, but again, I was like, man, kind of, kind of wish my family was here. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah, and then the, uh, and then Father's Day was just uh, a lot of cleaning. Big day tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Baby, baby coming tomorrow. So. That's exciting. Yeah, man. Um, we're we're pumped. We're like so ready to meet this kid. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. What time do you have to be there? You have to be there early. Oh man, it's stupid. Like uh, five a.m. and the hospital's an hour away. So I was gonna say that's how all of ours were. One one of them, I think we had to be there at. Yeah, I think they were all either five or four, something like that, depending on how the shifts were working out. So it was not uh, it was not fun. So was your and we don't we don't have to get into this if you don't want, but like was your was your wife c-sectioned like she had all c-sections or no she ended up she had to get induced she never uh, never went into okay. labor naturally so it was, it was kind of weird because you know i mean you hear about the the desperate drive to the hospital kind of a scenario and yeah she never even showed the slightest inclination to go into labor so we had hmm. she was really late with all of them to the point where the doctor was basically saying you know we're kind of getting to that point and I, I'm probably going to insult, you know, half the people that listen to this because this is apparently a, a very uh, controversial topic, but there are some times where the baby just doesn't want to come. And uh, you know what? The beauty of modern medicine, I think uh, somebody was posting about that. I forget who it was. Um, you know, I, I commented about my, my mom's birth experience, you know, not having to get life flighted, but you know, the, the beauty of modern medicine is there is a time and a place for intervention. There are natural things, but, but there's also a, you can get involved. You can you can do something about about a bad you know a birth that, that could cause problems. And uh, we were pretty close to that point with the first two. Um, Dang, dude. And then the the last two, it was more just laziness on our part. Um, we basically just said, <laughs> you know what, we're just we're not gonna wait. We're not gonna wait. We're just gonna go and schedule it for a week after the due date. And um, she got induced. You know, I mean, other than the induction, she gave birth naturally. Sure, but. Is what it is, but yeah, I mean, my my, you know, I don't think any of the births because my my mom had C sections for all of all of us, and I mean, she had to get life flighted for my older brother and my younger sister. Um, so yeah, I've I've kind of seen, I've seen I I've seen and heard all of all of the sides except for a natural birth, basically. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time, right? No, we're done. I think we're done. <laughs> it'll have to be one of my daughters. So. Yeah. That uh, and maybe that'll be. Uh, I don't need to know that. <laughs> Probably, I'll show up. I'll show up after the baby's cleaned up and, and hold my grandkid, and that'll be that. There you so. go. Perfect. Perfect. But yeah, it's it's kind of kind of crazy. Um, yeah, because my wife's high risk. We got a. It's a scheduled C-section at like thirty. La- Milo, my first was um, like thirty-five in six days or something like that. And this one here is 36 weeks, four days. And so like, because of the situation, her, um, her OB is like, this is when you're delivering. Like, this is like, th- we're going to, we're going to, like, you're going to have a C-section. We're going to take that baby out because like any, any further development and we start running into serious problems. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, modern medicine, man, it's kind of crazy. That is um, crazy. It, it's it, it's good and bad. It's good and bad. There's bad. a balance. I mean, there's you can do you can get bad from anything, but you yeah. know, in this case, it's it's a, an absolutely un. I, I forget the word I'm looking for there, but there's no downside here. You're having a baby. You're having a you know you're having a healthy baby yeah. thanks to thanks, yes. thanks to modern medicine. You can't. I mean. Yep. So. We had to go to the NICU last time, and so I'm expecting we're going to have to do that again. 
so if we don't have to go to the NICU tomorrow, um, I mean, it's like in the same hospital. Bonus like, <laughs> yeah, bonus points. Like, it's all, it's all good. Yeah. So can't be can't be disappointed if you're expecting almost the worst possible scenario. That's right. <laughs> long story is here. Hey guys, I'm gonna go. Hey, up. long story farms in South Carolina. Yeah. I heard I'm you. Leave the camera uh, off. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. I don't want to have to uh, turn it off for you. I don't even think I can do that. But whatever. <laughs> um, I. So we're we're just going over some personal events, uh, and I saw that you had an interesting time at the farmers market this weekend. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's weird when you call it a market and you're the only one there. That's definitely definitely weird. Show up and be the yeah, only the one. Spot. Yeah, yeah, but um, I mean, I don't know. I've got I I'm gonna probably probably going to type up what I think it should be um, just because I feel like it sounded like I was complaining. I'm not really complaining. I'm just saying like, you know, if you're going to do one, you have to be like committed to it and you have to be consistent. And I think that goes for everyone, the vendors, customers, and this, and the sponsors. And, you know, it's, it's pretty frustrating. Uh, it's about a 30 minute drive for me and that's tough. Did you, did anyway. you think you were complaining? I didn't think you were complaining. I thought it might have sounded like I was being a little, you know, butthurt or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe <laughs> no, nah, I didn't. I didn't think so at all. Um, I think we were all good. It was. I mean, it was. I don't think you sound how you think you sound because uh, it's like no. This is this is the reality of being in a small town's um, farmers market, like. I'm the only one here. What, what happened? And like, yeah. and this isn't, this doesn't work well for me because there's not enough people to bring in people. Like you need people to bring in people kind of thing. So like it, it was very thorough. Like it was, it was an interesting take and needed to be talked about. I thought. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. What else is new, man? Oh man, uh, I spent all day uh, working on fencing and uh, stuff fencing like that. So. For everybody, <laughs> I think it was a fencing weekend for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, let's let's get into let's get into the main topic. So, Father's Day, Happy Father's Day to both of you. Post Father's Day, late belated, I guess. Um, let's. What makes a good dad? And like my my second comment is like, what's the difference between a father and a dad? Because I always thought anyone could be a father, like be as um, blunt about that as you want. Um, anyone can really be a father, but it takes time, and effort and patience to be a dad. But that, that there's just that's how I think about it. You know, I, I guess, I guess for me, I, uh, my dad, my dad calls them sperm donors. Um, you know, there's a difference between that. And I would say there's even a difference between being a father and being a dad in terms of, I was, I, the father for me comes out as, as the, um, the family authority and dad is more of the, um, the fun um, for me. That's how I've always distinguished it. So d depending on whether I call him father or dad d is, uh, it's depending on, on which side of my father I'm, I'm talking to at that point in time. Sure. Um, but, you know, for me, no, I mean, I, I get what you're saying. There's, there's a huge difference. You, you have to be involved. Um, you know, that looks different for, for different um, fathers or dads. You know, I don't, I don't think, there's, there are probably some wrong answers to how to be involved in your kid's life, but, but by and large, um, you know, different dads are going to do it differently. Um, but ultimately being involved and making sure that they know that, that they're appreciated and that they're loved. Um, you know, those are, those are the big and easy ones. And after that, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of other stuff to it. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a complicated thing as to what, what, 
I think you, you, everybody, every kid needs a father figure. I don't know that every kid necessarily needs a dad, like a dad in that, in that aspect, the fun, the, you know, all the, but you need a father figure. You need somebody to respect you, and you need somebody, somebody that loves you that way for sure. Um, you know, we kind of see the failings of that in society. Hasn't there been like, a, like studies about that where like, you know, like criminal, if they look at like criminal, the personal lives of criminals or something like that, where it's like a lot of them didn't have a strong figure or no male figure in their life at all, or positive male figure in their life. Like they, they're pretty much destined for prison kind of. Have you, have you heard about this? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I guess, I guess for me, and I, I mean, I didn't really explain it very well, but I, I think every boy needs a father and every, and every girl needs a dad. And so I think those are the two, like, I think the boys, I mean, I think both having both sides is a good thing, but I think especially for boys, like the, the respect and, and that is really, really important for a boy to learn. You know, they need that father figure. And I think girls need a, a man that loves them, you know, and those are the two, you know, those are the two sides of the coin that each, each gender needs as dangerous of, as me saying, talking about gender right now. Um, you know, I think I think those are those are the base needs for for a kid, um, and obviously you want both, but but yes. I mean each side needs a little bit more of one than the other. I think, although I've I've been talking and and I'm sure Long Story has stuff to say here too. No, he doesn't have kids. <laughs> His kids are older. Is he even still here? What happened to him? Is he is he alive? Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I had my mic on mute. I didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I was I was taking it all in because uh, I hadn't thought of it that way. The boy needs a father and the girl needs a dad. That's that's interesting. Um, that is interesting. I have a girl and three boys, um, and I'll I'll tell you my my main father epiphany was I had like a two or three year old who was trying to load the dishwasher and he was doing it wrong and I I lost my mind and then I <laughs> and then I, I looked at him and I'm like who taught him how to do this right like like he didn't he wasn't born with like some instruction manual and i'm like man my job is to teach them not to you know not to um you know whatever be upset like, about stuff yeah um, reprimand and stuff yeah yeah constantly and, correct and, yeah yeah and so I've tried, I've, I've, I always fail at it, but I've tried since then to, whenever something goes wrong, to stop and check and make sure that I've taught them what I expect or what that, what I think society expects or whatever the case is before I say, you know, what the heck were you thinking or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I, had a, I had a pretty strict dad. So it's one of the things I've tried to do differently than my dad is that is to be more of a teacher and less you know, my dad taught by example very, very well. He's a great guy, great, great dad. But I've tried to be more of a teacher than than a disciplinarian. Yeah, let's 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 talk about uh, my next point. Is what was your dad like? So, like, let's let's go into that a little bit. What else was your dad like? Well, my dad was um, my dad was a chiropractor at the end of his life, but he um, he started off as a math teacher. And I one day I asked him, I said, hey, dad, why did you become a teacher? And he goes, well, the college I went to only made preachers and teachers. and I didn't want to be a preacher, <laughs> um, which I thought was pretty funny. But um, so he did. He taught school and coached. Um, he apparently was an extremely good ba- baseball player. Um, he played in a semi pro league. I remember I have vague memories of that. Um, and uh, after teaching, coaching, he uh, sold corn for a company called decab ag research which is now part of monsanto but back then was a separate entity and then um he got fired for being too honest and he was always a great example (laughs) to me of of honesty and integrity and uh he decided to become a chiropractor after that so uh super intelligent guy just very 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 smart very practical um not not the kind of person to lord over you the fact that they were you know educated and intelligent all that that that, just not at all that way he he had this gift of making everyone feel comfortable around him um but he was very strict and he was um you know he was he was someone that you know as when i was younger you know you you wanted to you did not want to cross him you know he was tough 
course, when my siblings, you know, I'm the oldest of seven. So when my siblings came along, he started mellowing out. And I'll just tell you a funny story. My my brother one time was sitting on the couch and my dad goes, get over here for prayers or something like that. You know, it's like a a family prayer type thing. And and, uh, my brother goes, no. And I thought, oh, man, it's been nice knowing you, brother. Uh, I thought that was it, you know. Yeah, and my dad just shook his head and was like, "Yeah, whatever." And I'm like, "Man, I would have been killed. <laughs> yeah, I'd have been right? summarily executed for that." You know. So, but yeah, good, good guy. Um, honesty was like the one thing that I took from him. Uh, he also was one of those guys that was like, um, "If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right." So, definitely have some perfectionist ten- tendencies, um, probably from <laughs> that being inculcated into my brain when I was younger. But anyway, those are some of my memories. I don't know. I, I hope I didn't reminisce too much there. No, no, that was good, man. Like, uh, cause the next part is like, you know, how does that, how does that influence how you father your children is, um, well, let's let, let's let Josiah go about yeah. what his dad was like first and then, uh, jump into that. Um, you know, honestly, probably, probably some similarities. He was a, uh, he was a military brat. Um, and so there was some of that disciplinarian, um, in him, um, he was busy, super busy, worked IT, um, still works IT. And um, so he did not have a whole ton of time to teach us a lot of things. I, I, I tell him to this day, actually, that uh, he taught me that I could do anything, but he didn't teach me how to do anything, um, which is it's it's a, it's an exaggeration. But oftentimes it would be hold this screwdriver, hold this piece you know, less than, you know, the actually how I'm doing it or why I'm doing this. Um, you know, so other than that, he's a great dad. He's a loving dad. I have, I have no, no complaints about that. I, I know I, I look back fondly to actually when I got married and our relationship changed entirely from me being his son to, I mean, I'm still obviously his son, but you know, almost equals like to the point of where, you know, we text all the time. I probably text him. I, I text him on my brother more than I text anybody else. Probably. Um, I mean, part of, you know, I, I work from home, so I don't have to text my wife, but you know, I, I, I talk to him all the time. Um, so that the, when that relationship changed, but I mean that, you know, I never had any questions, you know, I never had any issues with him really growing up. So, I mean, he was, he was a good dad. He set a good example. So. Sure. Yeah. So your dad's your dad's still around, huh, Josiah? Yes. That's yeah. that's a that's a great gift, man. Cherish that. My, yes. my dad passed away eleven years ago, and I, I miss him every day. So my dad talks about that because his his dad would have, I think it would have been thir- thirteen or fourteen years ago for him that his father yeah. passed away, and he he talks about that. You know, anytime something comes up, he'll be, you know, I wish I could talk to my dad about this. So. Young family men don't don't tend to live very long, so that's not a he, he was, his death was not necessarily particularly early in the grand scheme of things. So, dang dude, yeah, yeah. my family's pretty morbid about that too. We'll joke about we'll joke about dying young. So, you know, <laughs> only the good die young. Yeah. Well, you know, our last our last name is Young, so yeah. we we die we die young. That's kind of the joke. So those those but, Mountain Dews aren't helping you, dude. Yeah, well, <laughs> for for him for them. So my, my dad's had cancer and my, my granddad had, uh, he got shot down a couple times in Korea and Vietnam. So we used to joke that it Dang. was the mileage, the mileage on his body more than, uh, more than the age. So <laughs> Jeez. that's crazy, man. Yeah. That's a... Is that Mountain Dew you're drinking right now? No, that's water. Oh, okay. Just checking. Just water. Just checking. I haven't, had, I haven't had much Mountain Dew today, actually. I've been in that class. Is that why you're tired? Look- Yes. Well, I, I drove out here and I got out late and I didn't sleep well last night. So I'm a little, I'm a little sleepy. It's because it was a late night Mountain Dew. I'll keep me up. I'm too old to drink them. <laughs> I'm too old to drink them late. Uh, it's funny that you guys, you guys get along with your dads. Um, it's not that I don't get along with my dad is that we are too alike that we butt heads. Um, mm. We are very, uh, we are both very stubborn in how how to do things and how we want things done, and it's just um, I don't know. I get I get my I get my work ethic from my dad because it was always like, man, 
uh, long story, you talk about how, you know, your younger siblings get away with, you know, get away with murder pretty much. And so it was always because I'm the oldest of my dad's biological uh, children. Um, I was always the one that had to help my dad. It was always me. And then when my younger brother came around, you know, he'd, you know, be out there kind of helping. And then he'd like go in to like get water or a snack or something like that. And be like an hour later, like, where's, where's Derek? Like, where'd he go? And he'd be like inside watching TV. <laughs> my dad like wouldn't even care. Like, come on. I'm sweating my, sweating my ass off out here, like doing mulch or whatever we were doing uh, that day. And like, he'd go off inside, watch TV and you don't even care. Like, whatever, whatever. This is, this is only so be it but um the, like the the budding head things is like I'll, I'll give you an example of what happened this weekend so i picked up that fencing right and it's used so it has stain on it already and the stain is quite red uh i don't want it i don't want the i don't want red stain on my fencing it doesn't do me any favors it looks like crap so i was like showing off my just like i was video chatting my dad yesterday and um i was like showing him you know what i picked up and I'm like, yeah, I got to sand it all down and do some of that stain that we used on the deck and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, well, why don't you just leave it? I'm like, it's, it's red. I don't want it. And he goes, well, that's a lot of work. And blah, blah, like, try to talk me out of it. I'm like, I don't want red. I don't want a red fence. The end. Like, I know it's more work. I'm, this is how I want it. This is how I'm going to do it. <laughs> like, there's, there's not much uh, talking him out of something he wants to do either. So. My, my let it go. My father-in-law and his father are very much like that. I this is a fairly short story. Right after I got married, I went to bother or I I wanted a couch. There was a free couch, and my father-in-law said, "Okay, let's go talk to my dad because he's got a truck, and we'll go get the couch." And so I hop in the back of this truck. They're sitting up front, and they are are they argue the whole way to this free couch about how the fastest way to get there was. And neither one would give in, even though there was one clearly, I mean, one, one. And then they argued about which way was faster to get back to my house. The whole, like, just, I, but it, I mean, it wasn't even like a feigned thing. Like they were legitimately upset that the other one wouldn't choose the way that they wanted to go. It was, it was hilarious, but that was a butting head. I mean, they're just, they're both very dominant, sure. you know, personality. So it's, I mean, it's just hilarious for me in the backseat, just, you know, if I'd had Twitter back then, I would have been live tweeting the experience. <laughs> that, that, would, that would be something that would be something yeah i, I don't i didn't really butt heads with my dad I, I, I think younger um that was probably more my mom's favorite I, I, there's my my brother and i are really close in age and there's a big gap in just the rest of the kids and i think at the beginning of you know when our when we were younger i was probably my mom's favorite my brother's probably my dad's favorite and then um you know as a adolescent i was like reading and writing and doing stuff like that and my my dad's a very practical person just didn't see much use in any of that stuff so he thought you know didn't think a whole lot of it but i think by the end of his life like he saw um he saw me becoming a, a lot more like him you know like a lot more practical a lot more like is this going to matter if you know um is the idea matter if you can't act put into action or whatever so it was, it was interesting kind of watching that um evolve over time and i've watched that with my own kids you know how there'll be one of the kids that i'll really just think oh man this is really cool about this one kid and um and this constantly evolves and changes as their relationships as our relationship changes as they change and grow and it's just very interesting um you know watching that happen but especially when you have four and you see how different they can be even though they're all you know more or less the same genetics and everything right it's That's funny it. you say it though, because I was I was a mama's boy growing up, and yeah. then when I got married, like that completely changed. And then, yeah, there's like a, I mean, a I talked to my mom a little bit, but I I I mean, it's my dad. I talked to my dad ninety five yeah. percent of the time. It's like a a switch just flips in you, and you're like, okay, I need to I need to go get some wisdom here, and uh, yeah, definitely. Yep. So. Um... So 
what about your dad has influenced uh, how you father your children or how you dad your children, however you want to? Well, um, I mentioned a little bit just, you know, I thought my dad was more of a disciplinarian. I've tried to be more of a teacher. That's one thing that I, I wanted to do. I wanted to be different than my dad in that. Um, my dad was extremely hard worker. My dad could do almost anything. And I have realized that um, my kids see me much the same way. They see me as someone who's a very hard worker and can do anything. And, you know, I never imagined that I would retain that status as of any human being, plus my kids. But um, again, it's one of those patterns, you know. Um, I think, uh, it's just a pattern that happens, you know, as a kid. And, um, so I've wanted to live up to that legend that they created in their own minds. Uh, I think that's been one of the things that I've tried to do. I pressure myself to be, be even though we can't ever measure up to that. Um, I caught, I caught most of that. It was, uh, it was a little, it was a little jittery. Uh, I think man. I caught most of that. No, um, so uh, for um, for me, it, on, honestly, some of some of that is very applicable. Um, my my big thing, I I even told my dad this. I don't um, I don't really feel like there was a whole lot to uh, to improve upon. Hmm. Um, you know, but I did. I really wanted to um, take the time to teach my kids how to how to do stuff in a way that that my dad didn't. And it also gave me greater understanding for why in the world he didn't do that because I I feel that burden, you know, when I'm stupid busy and I have 27 things to get done that night, you know, spending 20 minutes helping my daughter undo a bolt on the truck um, so that I can, you know, change that old control valve or whatever it was that I was doing recently. You know, I, I can understand. I mean, it, it just gives me a lot more understanding for, for why why my dad failed in some ways um you know it's not an excuse for me to to fail too you know you always want to do better than than your dad or whatever but um that'd be a big one um but i learned i learned a lot about um you know how how to pass on tradition how to pass on um your beliefs and your values um you know um, my brother had a, a brief, a brief rough patch. Um, but, but by and large, all of his, all of my, my father's children have, um, you know, left, you know, they've become adults and they've kept their family values and they, you know, they've kept the, the things that are important to my dad. Um, they've stayed true to. So I think there's, there's a lot to learn from that. Um, you know, and they did a really good job of, um, helping us succeed in the way we wanted to succeed. They didn't push us to do anything in particular. Um, you know, they just helped us succeed at what we wanted to, what we wanted to go into. So I think there, there's a lot, a lot from there that I took away as far as how to do that and how to give my kids that kind of an upbringing. So. Sure. Yeah. It, uh, I'm going to be way more relaxed. I'm already way more relaxed about how I'm raising my son than, than my dad. Not that my, my, I don't, I don't think my dad was honestly that strict. I mean, he was strict, but it wasn't like <sighs> beat you with a belt strict. I mean, we definitely got spanked. Um, we got spanked a lot, <laughs> but uh, I'm not, I'm not spanking my kids. Um, I feel like it's unnecessary. You can use your words. If they can understand those words, then you don't need to spank them. It's kind of the long and short of it, but um, and like kind of, kind of what you were saying about spending 20 minutes to teach them how to do a, like undo a bolt, like, like I can get this done in like five minutes, please just give me five minutes. But then at the same time, you didn't teach him anything. Right. You know, it's, um, you gotta, you know, the, the classic holding the piece of wood, holding the screwdriver, flashlight, all that. Yeah. I, I need to, uh, that's kind of definitely in, always in the back of my mind. Like, can we learn something from him helping or whatever? And I think I already told this story before, but I was moving plants outside 
so that they could, you know, start start acclimating to the cl- like climate. This was like a month or two ago. And he was, my, my son was just like in the basement, dinking around with his little fake tool bench set. And so I'm just moving plants in and out, in and out. And I go to the back door and he's holding a plant, like, you know, in a, it's in a, in a pot and he hands it to me. I'm like, yeah, like I didn't even need to like say anything. He just saw me do and just wanted to do what I was doing. And I uh, just, that was like such an awesome, like, you know, like, uh, you know, dad's posting their W's kind of kind of thing like yeah if i could capture that uh if i could recapture that i would have and be like that's my w for the week like hell yeah this is awesome just like i don't know this felt felt awesome doing it doing it like that um man there was something else oh you had mentioned about uh didn't push you to uh to do stuff like you know just kind of let you be free to do what you wanted to do. I was definitely pushed into going to college because that's, that's what worked for my dad. I mean, let's talk, let's like realistically, like 95% of kids are pushed to go to college and probably like still. Right. Um, Cause that works. That's what worked for him. And you know, it was like the seventies and here we are, <laughs> but uh you know, it worked out, it worked out great for my dad going, going to college. Cause he'll, as he put, puts it, um, they grew up piss poor, but like actually like pretty dang poor. Uh, and so I think he, I mean, he worked really, really hard to have a better life than his parents did. And he wanted his kids to have a better life than he had. Um, I almost think he went too far making us like too comfortable if you know what i mean like he should have like you know we, we talk about not being strict or not like too strict or whatever i feel like he could have really cut back on the um giving us too much like he almost like gave us too much you know what i mean like <laughs> I, I almost felt like i never had to worry about anything and like as a kid i guess that's good but at the same time it doesn't make you like hungry to go chase like go get something for yourself just like oh dad will always be there you know what i mean yeah i don't know if i yeah. explained that very well um but no, i get it i get it for sure i mean i think um that's one of the things i i struggle with right now wondering whether i'm making things too easy but by the same token i feel like the kids are they all have chores they all have things they have to do um they don't, uh, they get, they get a, a basically an allowance related to that. Um, and I do pay them for certain projects, especially related to the farm itself the, around the house. I don't think they should be paid because that's their thing. You know, that's like just part of being in a, you know, functioning member of society. Um, and I do wonder sometimes if I don't, you know, I don't give them enough, um, you know, incentive to go figure out their own way on some stuff, but um, I, th- I think it's working out so far that the, the kids are very driven about the things they care about. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think it's worked out. Okay. I, I do wonder about it. Something I, I constantly question. The other thing I'd mention is, uh, when Josiah, you're talking about your dad didn't teach you specifically how to do things. I think my dad was a lot the same way. Like I didn't ever get taught specifically do this in order to accomplish this thing, but all those hand me the screwdriver, hold this. I mean, a lot got absorbed by osmosis, you know, I mean, a uh, bunch of stuff that I do now that I'm like, oh, yeah, I saw my dad do that. And I don't remember ever him, you know, stopping to tell me this is what I'm doing, you know, <laughs> so right. it's interesting. I was talking to um, someone on Twitter. This is probably two years ago. Um, and and they were saying how they they had a um, acidity problem in their soil. And uh, we went back and forth a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really know, man. Goodness, you know, you should have thought about that in the winter time, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> And then I, I remember my dad used to come, sometimes cut a furrow alongside a row and lay in like uh, lime or fertilizer or whatever if, if it needed something in the middle of the season. And I go, hey, why don't you try? My dad used to do this. Why don't you give that a try, you know? And um, I don't, again, I don't remember my dad ever teaching me. I just remember working with him, you know. But, I don't know. There's a... Um, it's a little bit off topic, my. Um, but when I was um, 
when I was a young man, I read, uh, I was reading some books and stuff, trying to, you know, figure out what I wanted to do and be and who I was and all that stuff. Um, and, uh, there's this guy, I was, uh, I think his books on tapes, like a motivational speaker guy. I can't remember his name, but, um, he said, forgive your parents and forgive yourself and get on with your life, you know? And, um, you know, I was at that age where you think you, where you still think you're smarter than your parents and, uh, hadn't yet realized that, uh, that I wasn't smart as my parents. <laughs> and, uh, and it was, it just hit, it hit the right time for me, you know, to be like, okay, you know, my mom and dad, you know, they, they had to deal with a lot of complexity. They had to deal with a lot of things and they handled what they could handle. And, you know, um, anyway, it was a good, it was a good thing to, to hear that and kind of go, yeah, this is what I need to figure, you know, figure out right now. But anyway, no, that's a, it's a good point as far as that goes with, you know, having, having a relationship and continuing to have, um, you know, a connection with your, with your dad, especially after you get to adulthood is understanding, you know, like I was talking about with, with understanding why my dad was the way he was about, you know, teaching oh, yeah. or whatever. And um, I, you know, Josiah, I'm, I don't mean to cut you off, but I just want to say this was not aimed at you. It was more aimed at the people who like, my parent, my parents are so toxic, and then, you know, it's more. <laughs> well, that's, that what I was, that's what I was going to say, though, okay. is, is yeah. like forgiving, forgiving your parents for their failures, but but still being able to learn from them. You know, like yep. you, holding it over their head doesn't doesn't help anything. Yeah, but I, I, but helping uh, to learn and understand and 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 grow from that and and have it improve your parenting. You know, is yep. important. Yep, for sure. I, I I've seen so many. Uh, people most i guess on social media but i've seen you know even in real life we're like you know i just had to cut off my parents because they're just you know and i and i like even even if your parents had like really abhorrent views about something like i don't know man I, it would take it would take some pretty bad stuff for me to ever be like yeah you know i can't be associated with them i mean i, I think there's a lot of you know, we probably talked about some of the stuff and like mentalities and diet and things like that, but there's a lot of people out there who are um, taking some pretty unforgiving positions towards their parents and, you know, specifically, but ancestors in general. And it's like, there's probably zero chance or a very, very small chance that you would act, have acted any differently than your ancestors did given the same circumstances. And, um, you know, I feel like a lot of people are like, I would have never, you know, whatever. Um, I would have never been a Nazi if I were in Germany or I would have never, you know, and it's like. If it meant food yeah. on the table, like. <laughs> it probably would yeah. No, I like, mean, you, it's a huge thing. It's a huge thing to realize, you know, life, life was. Or be shot. Yeah. Well, but life was, was completely outside of our understanding. Oh, not totally. that long ago. I mean, I don't right. understand what life was like 50 years ago, and 100 years ago is even more foreign. Oh yeah, you know, life life was very, very different, and so their choices and the, how they acted, and you know, we are soft. I mean, as I'm not, hell I don't want to excuse it. Older generations. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, mean, I don't want to excuse it, but there. So I mean, soft. What, you know, the the racism or how they treated, you know, sexuality or. You know, any of these things, you know, they're not that that wasn't it wasn't important back then. It was normal back then to to be like that. And the idea that you would be wildly different than everyone else, you know, especially because if you're not wildly different now, then you probably wouldn't have been wildly different 100 years ago either. Yeah. I mean, so unless you're the crazy dude, you know, just kind of understanding that. And like I said, it's not an excuse, but understanding, you know, the, the differences and they're still your parents or your grandparents or whatever. They yep. still have wisdom to give you, even if you disagree with them on some things. So, yeah, they might give you reassurance as even if they disagree, like um, why you believe what you believe or think what you think. Like, yeah, I still don't, I still don't see it, but I appreciate the uh, like alternative point of view kind of thing. Yeah, I, I think. Um... You know, I, th I mean, obviously, I'm from the South, so yeah, we have, you know, you have to deal with this, um, the, the, whatever, uh, <laughs> the, the history of this of the region, um, 
and I get asked about it a lot. And I used to, uh, I'm not sure if I ever told you this, if I ever told this story, um, here, I don't think so, but I had, um, I had a really hard time reconciling that. And I went through like every stage of, you know, imaginable of trying to reconcile, like, you know, my ancestry, whether or not my ancestry was complicit in it or what, you know, and, Mm. you know, am I, am I proud of it? Am I not, am I ashamed of it? You know, what, what should I feel? What should I think? Um, I, and I went through probably a period of time where you would have called me almost an apologist, you know, um, just, just trying to think, you know, these people probably were good people and I must be missing something kind of, kind of maybe reaching for something like that, you know? Um, but, uh, I met a German family when we were, uh, we were backpacking in Chile. We met a German family and they came and stayed with us for a couple of weeks up in Santiago when we were there. And, um, I said something about, you know, we were talking about Nazism and German and being German and, and slavery and being Southern American. And, um, you know, this whole thing of like, whether you should be proud of it or not came up and she said, you shouldn't be ashamed or proud or anything. It just is. It just is. It happened. It's not you. And that's all, you know, and just not like a burden you should be carrying. And I would like, man, like <laughs> just to, to, to distill it down for me. And I wish I had heard that when I was, you know, a lot younger, because yeah. I kind of battled with this for so long, you know, um, but it was a, it was a really cool thing to go, you know what? Yeah. I don't have to carry this burden around. It just happened. It is. And I, I, I have to try to, you know, just be a, you know, a good person, try to alleviate suffering um, in the Christian context, try to bring, you know, create heaven on earth. That's the way I think about it. Um, so anyway, sorry. I, I feel like I digressed there a little bit, but I thought, it was no, man, funny. no, it, uh, People have no idea what their ancestors went through just to stay alive. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a giant, a giant family reunion of like there. I can't remember the exact genealogy, but it's like you know two big families of like thirteen kids, and then I'm part of like the something something like twenty six kids of twenty six kids. I don't know. There's, there's there was like seven hundred people at this family reunion in northern Minnesota. And one of the stories wow. that, uh, yeah, no, and it was like it like made the paper because it was like two thirds of the town up there. Um, uh, one of the stories that was being told was it was like my great grandparents or great great grandparents or something like that. They were riding on a sleigh, um, and they had like food with them. I don't know, remember where they got their food, but they were being chased by wolves, and so they had to throw food off the sleigh to like keep the wolves off of them like that sounds nuts could you imagine like litter like aside aside from like you know guy alaska that's like his every tuesday or something like that <laughs> fighting off wolves to keep keep from like eating his children um like could you imagine almost anybody else in that situation they would be like pissing their pants like that's yeah. that sounds terrifying like we are just not like we are we are not of the same blood like this is, this is not something i would be in including myself and like that sounds wild yeah well you know um one of the one of the guys that uh i'm a millennial ancestor or a descendant of a guy who is a lieutenant colonel in the confederate army and um I, there's no records of him owning slaves and I, I found out recently that a lot of the the um german immigrant yeoman farmers weren't slave owners they weren't mm. you know um and uh, it, it kind of a, a little bit more peace for me, you know, um, but, uh, you know, I don't know. It, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I think we're like you say, we're pretty harsh judges of of uh, of these people. And, and we're totally out of the context of what they were going through and really difficult to reconcile with our, our values. What uh, what that would have been like. I mean, like you said, like, you know. I'm very sympathetic to the idea that we should have ecosystems that are intact. And, and that means wolves and other predators, apex predators. But, you know, if you were thinking in terms of a settler in the, and back in those, in that time frame, shooting a wolf would have seemed like the most reasonable thing in the world, you know? Well, I said, you talked, you talked about 
about losing a cow. I think it was just last week or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It was last week. Yep. You know, when you, when you have that context of your, your family could starve if that wolf kills your cow. Um, it, it, it's not only does it, does it seem to make sense? It absolutely makes sense. It absolutely. In a very tangible, practical way is the most reasonable course of action. Like you can't, <laughs> no you can't risk that. If, if the wolf has to die for my family to live, then I'm, I'm killing that wolf every time. Yeah. I'd still give, kill that wolf every time, even knowing, you know, like if that was my choice, you know, but I, I think, I mean, to take your whole story and, and, and circle back to, to kind of where, where we started from again, it, it comes back to forgiving, whether it be your parents or your, great 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 you know granddaddy um yeah. and forgiving them for that and trying to do better um yep. at the same time you know um you know you don't have to excuse it you don't have to you don't have to offer any of those things let me say that was then this is now i do better than that you yep. know and that's all i mean at the end of the day you're not going to change what happened 170 years ago nothing to do about so. it other than, do, other than live your life to the best of your abilities and learn from, you know, and, and use the, the life that they gave you. So, cause I mean, you, you look back, everybody, everybody's family, everybody's uh, genealogy has somebody that did something horrible. So what yeah. do? just make sure it's not you in that tree. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, well, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a, a, a much, uh, a much more straightforward and less rambling way than, uh, than what I was getting at, but yeah, you know, we have, a, oh. you know, my family's got, got some border war, you know, Kansas and Missouri. Mm. Um, oh yeah. Blood. And, um, I'm on both sides too. So I'm an equal opportunist. I can, I can <laughs> make fun of the South or the North, depending on which, uh, which side I want to align myself with. Um, but you know, so you, you, I, that, that isn't even that far back. I mean, I don't know. I don't, you know, I, I don't, I don't go much further back than the 1820s, um, in my family, but, you know, when you go back, you're going to find something. You're going to find something that you, you know, yeah. you should probably be ashamed of. But you don't have to be because it wasn't you. No, you know, don't, be, yeah, don't exactly. be that guy. Yeah. I, I, uh, there's a guy that um, I don't know why uh, he, he, we followed each other for a long time and he unfollowed me not too long ago, but um, he goes by Brighter Abyss on Twitter. And um, he, he posted something that he had been thinking about how to be a, a good ancestor. And I thought that was a really cool thought. Um, you know, how, you know, how can you be a good ancestor? How can you be someone who lives values that are going to last through, you know, not just the next 20 years, but the next, you know, century or millennia or whatever. Uh, it's hard. It's a hard thing because some of this stuff is, is, you know, morphs over time, but uh, I thought it was a really good thought. No, I've heard uh, the concept of like seven gender, like sev seven, several, seven generation thinking like you know like uh your your descendants that you there is no chance you will ever meet even with you know living to 200 years or whatever like you'll you'll never meet these kids that will eventually be adults and then have kids of their own so on and so forth but like what are you doing right now that's for them well it's funny you say that, especially you know given given the context of of the the fatherhood which you know is, is what we started on even though we went all over the place, <laughs> you know, it's like, what, what are the things that I, that I notice or know about um, seven generations ago um, that was applicable to me? And what am I doing to continue to espouse those values? Um, because they, they clearly mean something to me. Um, so on, on one side of my family, they were, um, he was an orphan. I don't know. I, I can't go any further back than him. Hmm. But um, he was apparently an upstanding guy who had lots of kids and raised them well because from his generation on, every single one served in the military. Every single one had lots of kids, farmed, did well, and got us to the point where my grandfather, you know, then my father and, you know, all these people that I actually did meet, um, you know, so they, there, there are some values that, that I, that I can look back, you know, seven generations ago and see, you know, but what, what am I doing now? What am I, you know, what lasting things can I either, can I be building or can I be instilling in my kids to instill in their kids and so on? So I think it's a great way to look back. You know, yeah. are you, well, are you making your, your ancestors, you know, would you, would you have made them proud and, and what are you doing so that your kids can look back to? Yeah. 
And, and it's interesting because you got actually the last question you put in here, Matt, is uh, how has that affected future generations? We we kind of skipped over the does our society kill the father figure, but uh, maybe we can so start a Twitter thread part. about it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did want to comment on that killing the father figure because I, I, I mean, really going back to what Josiah said about, um, you know, sons need fathers and girls need dads. I think, um, I think we've we've made it almost impossible to mo model true masculinity in society at large. Um, it's a rare thing. Uh, I, I posted something the other day about useful useful men. Um, you commented on it, Matt. Um, but uh, yeah, I have it pulled up. Do you want me to read it quick? Sure, whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is this is every every episode. This is Matt Reed's tweets. Uh, this is this is my thing. This is my job. Uh, so you wrote, <laughs> overheard a couple of guys talking while eating at a Mexican place with my sons. They were family men, fathers. They were they were talking about collapse and the end of the world starting to think so many of us expect it and that it will become self-fulfilling that's what you said yeah. yeah there's another one too though but um that one was interesting because the guy was talking about i'm not sure if it was something like making something like making alcohol in a bathtub or something it was something like you know something that he would only do he i would only do it if the world collapses like you know and it was, I couldn't really hear it very well. You know, I wasn't like okay. trying to hear exactly. I just kind of overheard it. But um, right. it was interesting because these guys looked like such normal, like normies, as you know, people might say. Um, and I and I, I was surprised to hear him talking like that. But there was another tweet where I was talking about a Russian lady I work with because she came to me one day. She's like, what is it with all these useless men in the United States? And I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> that, like, I remember that I'm, one. I remember seeing that one. Too. I'm like, I'm so Sorry, yeah, no, but um, I think though that it has been, you know, like you know, Josiah and I are talking about our dads, and you are as well. Our dads teaching us. They, they our dads had skills. We talked about this uh, a little bit last week about, you know, a, a whole generation of grandparents whose occupation is leisure. Uh, but our parents, my dad, had skills that he could pass on to me, and he passed them on to me, even though a lot of it's through osmosis. I have cultivated and, and tried and worked to develop skills that I can pass on to my kids. I mean, most of my kids can, you know, hammer a nail and can, you know, sew on a button and whatever, you know, they can do, a, you know, make a, a basic meal, whatever. Um, they're, 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 they're somewhat self-reliant and, and all that. And I think that modeling that type of masculinity has become very difficult, um, you know, because uh, to, you know, I think two things, one is, that just that's the whole concept of toxic mas masculinity which is basically just masculinity in my opinion and um that's just being termed toxic by people who who don't like the idea that there are actual gender roles and they're not social constructs but and then the other thing just being this idea that we should all be so well off that we don't need to to do things ourselves we should be paying people to do them um those two things i think have made it really hard to model what you know being a man is or being um you know being masculine or being a dad or whatever it's it's funny i i didn't i never saw that that tweet but i actually i i can't tell you much of the details because i would i would reveal too much but two weeks ago i had a lady ask for for help um and then uh, i helped her and she um she goes you know i would ask somebody else but uh, all the other guys i know are a bunch of pussies and um, I was like, well, I mean, I, that makes me feel good about myself, but it also makes me feel terrible about all these other guys that she could have asked me yeah. and didn't. Um, yeah. But no, I, and um, I, I think... You're a 10 out of 10. Uh, yeah, guys, I mean, I, I felt... Taken. Yeah. <laughs> I think the other the other thing that happens as far as, you know, with those skills or those other things is I think we, we can sometimes caricature what what those what those men look like um, you know, I think to some degree, and I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I have an email job, so I don't, I don't want to talk down on trades, but I think like even, uh, even myself, I, I actually have a, 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 maybe, maybe a bit too much veneration for, for trades because they are this caricature. They are this thing that I look at, like, uh, you know, they, they do have all these practical skills, some of which I don't have. They are very skilled. They have these things that, you know, they're lasting skills, um, mm -hmm. 
you know, but you you can still be a dweeb of a dad and be capable. You, I, at least I hope so for my sake. That, that, um, yeah. You know, but so you don't have to be this hulking dude who can, you know, engine swap a, a Chevy truck in, in a night, you know, to have a skill that's valuable, to have a skill that you can pass on, to be capable, to 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 be not, you know, not a pussy like that, like the lady well, told me, you know. Yeah. And I think one of the things is that we caricature that, like you say, both in a positive way and in a negative way. But the, the one thing about the one, I guess, skill that I want my kids to learn more than anything else is not to be afraid of trying. Like mm. if because half the 100%. half the time when people ask me to do something, they go, I don't know anyone else that can do this. You, you think you could help me? And I'm like, huh. I've never done this before, but let's see if we can figure it out. I'm not afraid to try, you know? And, uh, you know, if you're dealing with something that's already broken, hey, well, how bad can it get, you know? Um, especially if you're trying, you know, you're trying to fix something. But I'm just saying, like, just to have that lack of fear of giving it a shot, doing your best effort, that's the one thing. If, if I could just push one thing into my kid's brain, that would be the one thing I'd program them with because, you know, half of it is just showing up and giving it a shot, I think. I mean, and then the thing you described doesn't work, okay. then does work. <laughs> Half of my IT job is is running back to my desk after somebody tells me something is wrong and googling it. Yeah. Um, you know, it, because I, I I just have to be willing to look for a, an answer and then push it. And many many most of the things that I do around the house or whatever, I've never done. Yep. I've never seen anybody do it. You know, I'll get a YouTube video on or whatever, but I just try it. So I think you're right. I think that it, that is one of the most important things, you know, that you can teach somebody is you you can do it. You can do anything but your put your mind to or try. You know, what's the worst that happens? I mean, I put my chimney in and it only leaked twice before I got it right. You know, so yeah, big yeah. deal. Yep. Yeah. Well, what do you guys want to wrap up on? Um, I am gonna attempt to go to bed soon-ish. I probably will just lay in bed and stare at the ceiling for the next hour and a half, but I'll be in bed. <laughs> no, I, I, all I would say is just like, you know, uh, again, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there that are trying yes. to to protect and provide for their kids and and procreate and yeah, doing their doing and, their and make more. more. We need more fathers, more good fathers. Yeah. And uh, you know, you know, be a, be a, like we were saying, be a good ancestor. And credit to Brighter Abyss for for that thought. That was a good thought. Yeah. And follow Long Story Farms again if you're listening. Whatever that guy's That's name right. is, refollow uh, him. It, it, the funny, the, the irony of that uh, is he unfollowed me right after I posted something a little controversial about uh, uh, how I think Lincoln was a horrible president. So. I might have offended some northern sensibilities there. <laughs> he likes he's a fan of top hats. That's the those thing. poor Yankees. You hurt you hurt the feelings. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they're I just too. I uh yeah, I I I I probably shouldn't have I, I try to avoid politics on the farm account. I, I probably should have just stayed away from that. But it's, it was politics hundred and sixty years ago though, man. Like you shouldn't have to worry about yeah. your, your controversial hundred and sixty year old politics. Yeah, it's like the patent yeah. ran out. Yeah. <laughs> You can steal that patent now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't speak any for president. him. I, yeah, I, I can't speak for. Him. I don't know what you know. What it, it, you know, it could be anything. I mean, I'm definitely uh, really far to the right compared to him in terms of probably the way he views uh, my my thoughts. So maybe he just got tired of me. You know. But yeah. uh yeah. No, I mean, I I guess I guess for me ending on you know even even talking or even thinking about what you want as as being a dad or being a father means you're doing more than i would say most most parents most most yeah. fathers um in america for sure it's like even just putting putting forth the effort to think about how you want to be a dad uh, means you're, you're probably going to get a better outcome than most most folks would yeah if you're uh, stressing about it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know i know it, it was something that worried me for the first and I, you know, but ultimately I mean, that, that was a little piece of advice that my dad gave me was, was, you know, if you're thinking about it, you're, you're on the right track, you know, you'll find what works for you and what works for your kids. Um, so that's my, that's my big thing as far as, you know, what, you know, as how, how fatherhood works and, and, and how you, you know, what, what your role as a father is.
So, all right, we're all going to get our kids on the next podcast and they can discuss how we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> if I give enough ice cream and candy out, they'll say whatever I they'll say whatever I want. So, hey, if that makes you a good dad, I don't. That, that's what makes me a good dad. Bribery, bribery to get the right behavior. <laughs> that's exactly what works. So, uh, to Josiah's point earlier, um, Milo, if you ever listen to this in the future, and then baby number two, who uh, we don't know what we're having yet, if you are listening to this, I'm trying my best. Please forgive me. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Give me some grace. Uh, So because of that, we are going to take probably like a two-week break. Uh, I'll I'll let you guys know what, when, when we're picking back up, probably early-ish July. Second week in July, probably. Maybe. Maybe third week. I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll talk about it. We'll message each other. We'll figure it out. So uh, let's, long story, where can people find you? And what do you do? Uh, right, right now, Twitter and Facebook, Long Story Farms. Um, we're, in, we're in Newberry, South Carolina, and we're at the market every weekend. So come find Even us. Even if you're by yourself. Well, that one was a different town. But yeah, our, oh, okay. our, our little local Newberry market, we're there whenever the market is there. And uh, we might have some news on a new market, which I mentioned that in that thread the other day. Um, nice. in a, in a week or two. Um, well, I'll, I'll definitely let everyone know. Yeah. We, we've got some ideas brewing. So. Oh yeah, man. Cause I, uh, go. And, um, I'm on Twitter. Inventive. <laughs> I think actually, I, and I, I have goats and I think actually probably by the, by the next time we have this, uh, this call, my wife will have, flipped on her instagram and she'll be doing uh she'll be doing the the wife side of uh the over the moon farm duo of uh home setters so, i'm looking forward to seeing what she puts out she's definitely got the artistic uh eye that i do not between the pictures and the videos so she's know, also you put up you put up some pictures of your kids every once in a while and like damn that's a good i picture. stole them i stole them from her actually <laughs> she gets upset about that I, I'm well then you get the credit her. whatever like, well yeah I'm, but i'm supposed to be giving her credit Eh. But she's also she's a lot more photogenic than me too, so you know, <laughs> I'll go a long way. So that's fine. Uh, cool. And um, I am Matt DeRocher of Farm Hop Life. You can find me everywhere, uh, Farm Hop Life, and all the handles. And check out my my twenty by twenty three project. Um, you can go to farmhoplife.com slash twenty x twenty three. Learn more. Help twenty homesteads in twenty twenty three. That's the project. There we go. Uh, All right. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks, everybody, for listening. See you later. All right. Thanks, Matt and Josiah. Talk to you guys later. See you. See you.